Hello and welcome to this continuing live coding series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. This is the third part in a sub-series on creating an online store or e-commerce section of the site. We're essentially creating a bookstore and are able to modify a cart it has the ability to calculate prices based on quantity, add and remove items from the cart. And the next step will be to take customer orders. So the code we're writing is largely inspired by a book on packed publishing, Django 2 by example. The code is graciously uh, released as open source. And the book is you know, fairly reasonably priced for uh, the amount of uh, content it covers. Um, it's really a progressive uh, building on previous chapters. It does um, give you hands-on experience with building practical projects for projects, it says. If we look at the table of contents here real quick, we're going to build, you know, in the book, you build a blog, a social website, sort of like a social network, an online shop, and an e-learning platform. So we're really taking um, into account the chapters on building an online shop and for some reason these JavaScripts aren't working here to populate it. Um, you know, you know, full price 40 euros, I think the $40, I think the content is uh, really good. I have a subscription to Pact and it's $10 a month and there's, a, you know, I think that's a good deal. So I'm not really getting any um, kickbacks or anything. This is not paid endorsement. Um, PAX content at times has been questionable. Even in this book, there are some omissions. There's a particular um, part of one chapter in the e-commerce section that the code was omitted entirely. Um, but fortunately, it was uh, all published on GitHub. I think we're in chapter eight. So managing payments and orders. So it's all there, even if the book doesn't contain part of it. All right, well, that's enough. Uh, I just wanted to give attribution and show my gratitude for Pact and uh, the author of this book, Antonio Millet. It's been really helpful along this uh, non-trivial feature that we're building here with e-commerce. All of our source code is available on GitHub. And you can see it here. And we have an app for each of these parts. This is a nonprofit website for Western Friend Magazine, the official publication of Quakers in Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain Yearly Meetings. We have so far built this magazine section of the website. We're in the middle of building the bookstore. And we've been working in previous episodes on the library and community sections. So we're coming uh, pretty far along. The decision was made to port this from Drupal to Django and Wagtail, mainly because uh, of the Python language. We're realizing that for this site, we're going to need to write some custom code. And from a developer perspective, I would rather be writing Python than PHP, but that's my preference. PHP, I think, also has a lot of good things going. I just, I don't want to dabble in too many languages. Python and JavaScript are already enough for me to kind of um, focus on. Likewise, we wanted to build on something mature, and that's been around for a while, not a fly-by-night uh, web development framework. So, you know, Django and Drupal are both good examples of projects that have been around for a number of years and are under continuing revision, continuing updates. So 
again, it just boiled down mainly to um, sort of different developer experience. But also the fact that in the Django ecosystem, the Wagtail project has really come to shine. And it gives you a very WordPress-like experience for those who are familiar with uh, PHP content management systems. Um, even the modern WordPress, I think, 5 series has uh, changed the way you write and manage content with a Gutenberg editor that you, you connect blocks, basically chunks of content, anything from a paragraph to a rich, you know, with rich text capabilities to a multimedia embedded um, widget rendering video or audio or images, all the way up to like any kind of custom thing you can imagine, slideshows, uh, anything with, you know, including HTML and JavaScript interactivity and um, your own CSS. So the stream field is, I think, a pretty contemporary way of managing content. Um, Wagtail also gives the editor some nice tools for multimedia management and tracking engagement. And if you want to build, um, you know, a JavaScript client or a, a Swift client or whatever, it comes with a, a CMS or an API out of the box. I think they're even looking into a GraphQL API now support. All that stuff is done for you free just by adopting Wagtail. Uh, yep. Yeah, so these were, and it's got a drag and drop form builder. We haven't come to this yet but I believe we'll be needing this soon so definitely if you're looking to build a fresh project with uh, that's sort of content oriented I highly recommend Wagtail if uh, you're not so in need of a um, content management UI you might just consider the Django framework it's very mature and batteries included all right, so those are my endorsements, and here's where we are with the code. So we're in chapter eight, and we're looking at the orders module. And in particular, the order model and order items. An order is what connects sort of customer shipping information, a payment, and one or more basically products. Um, with the order, so it's a sort of a many-to-many -many table. Uh, I'm going to deviate from the design, I believe. I'll, I'll do an experiment, um, but I don't think we want to do uh, this foreign key to product. I think the product information should be static. because the title of the product could change. I don't know, maybe we, we don't have to do that. Um, but this will be used to generate invoices and look at historic orders. And if somebody ordered a book of a given title a year ago and for some reason the editor has changed the title or added a, a revision to the title in the product catalog, uh, like, edition number two and they buy edition one uh, could be confusing so for the reason of data integrity the price and quantity are static values taking the price at the time of purchase and the product is a dynamic relationship so we might look at that um, in the course of our work today So we've got the site running. We're going to stop the site. Create the orders app. So we have some basic scaffolding here. 
we don't really use the admin file or the views file for wagtail wagtail does those two automatically more or less same with urls so i'm just getting some stuff set up off screen so i can keep track of the chat Installed apps. Settings. Base settings. Now we're going to come over here. So let's actually commit this initial scaffolding. So I'm just thinking here for a second about naming conventions. Essentially, uh, I'm not being very consistent here. Usually app names, Django app names, I believe are plural. So this is correct, the orders app. Uh, but this one should be contacts. Events is good. Facets is not so much an app as a way of getting initial code. Uh, there's not, there's no one home. So library is semi-plural because it's a single, singular place for multiple library items. Uh, in any case, I might rename contacts in a while, but uh, for now, the convention is that, to, to reiterate, um, Django apps should be plural, Django models should, should be singular, model represents a single entity, generally. All right, so going over to orders, models, whoops, whoa, triple clicking. So this is pretty much going to come straight from here. From here, we're going to introduce payments. Uh, we haven't really settled on Braintree. We're still in discernment about that. The book does uh, go down. J J uh, Braintree is a subsidiary of PayPal. Um, it's more neutral. It doesn't take you away from the site. It doesn't make you log into or encourage you to log into a PayPal uh, service in order to make your payment. Uh, they can take just general cards uh, and other payment uh, types, um, including Venmo, Apple Pay, Google Pay. So we're leaning pretty uh, sort of heavily, strongly towards uh, using Braintree, particularly since we're already using PayPal. And Braintree is acquired by PayPal. Uh, from an end user perspective, it's a pretty seamless payment process. You just embed it right into your your app. You know they don't have to leave your web site and can select from multiple payment types, including PayPal. So if they do want to go away uh, to the payment processor uh, flow, it is the choice of the end user. So again, we'll come back to the payments probably uh, in a next weekend. Once we've made the decision, I have a meeting on Wednesday where we'll cover this side on which payment processor to use. So another thing is, you know, I'm tempted to just copy and paste this, but what we're actually doing here is, um, you know, we're developing this with Wagtail. So 
what we want to do is inherit from the wagtail page model. It gives us a, a lot of benefits and keeps things consistent across our project. Other than that, it's pretty much a Django, regular Django model. Uh, one other thing I just realized. Under our contacts app, we have a contact model, a person model. And we're using given name and family name. So I will actually use those fields for consistency. All right, given name, family name. But these other ones we can. Create an updated, I think, are part of the Wagtail model. I can add paid at this point. And let me double check something at schema.org. Schemas. Looking for the place schema. I want to see how they do. Um, how they name the fields that are related to a uh, postal address. Here it is. Address. So they're not actually breaking it down. Address, locality, region, postal code, street address. Okay, they are using street address. Locality. Hmm. Well, I think city. Postal code. I mean, locality just seems a little bit too, too abstract. It's a little bit of a stretch. I understand they need to make it general purpose to handle addresses around the world in different regions. Uh, but I'm not going to adopt that. I think I will stick with postal code and street address, though. All right. Cool beans. see Paris France so the locality can handle city and country in one field That's challenging. We'll have to come back to it. Addresses are non-trivial. I was looking for some Django address module for a best practice here. It's just not trivial. It, it's like a lot of complication. We need to start dealing with addresses and around different regions, country name, state, locality.
This has a dependency on Google. I like the model, but I don't like the dependency on Google. And it seems uh, relatively up to date. Man, Furious Luke is pretty active. Alright, well, for now I'm just going to keep it with city level details. City, we don't even have it. Though you can't uh, ship something without a state. So this book kind of glosses over one of the most complicated aspects of the e commerce. And just in general, <laughs> How do you store addresses for people? Address, postal code, city. We don't know that all of our users, all of our Customers will be shipping stuff only to the United States. Well, one way I could actually handle this is just by giving a mailing address field. That's not very elegant. It's hard to parse into its constituent parts, but it's easier to model in a database. And we could explain to the user to enter their address as it would appear on an envelope. Hmm. This, you know, we're, this would mean we can't calculate shipping very good if we decide that later. I don't know if I want it to be a rich text field. 
I think just text field. All right, so let's try this. Postal address. And I'll just plan to throw my first one away. If, uh, if I get feedback from Mary that says this is not the way we want to go, a uh, whole reverse course and do the individual fields for address elements, but I just need to move forward. So postal is in a way that won't clash with the recommended field names. Postal address. It'll just be uh, models, text field. fields this is what for the back end wagtail we'll use to generate an editing form and it'll choose widgets based on the field type these should all be double coded dang it Ports are in place. Trying to make this second uh, nature or reflexive. So I'm just typing that out. That's cool. I didn't know you could uh, customize the form hooks, kind of hooking into the different processes. Nice. All right, I don't know that we'll need to do that here. Let's go ahead and model the second part, which is... We'll register this with the uh, Wagtail admin, and in that context, we'll change the ordering. Also, Wagtail. Ah, oh, I just realized. This order is going to have a title. Man. So we probably don't want to inherit from from Wagtail in this case. There's been time where I decided not to inherit from Wagtail page model and regretted it. I hope this is not one of those times. Such as not being able to use these field panels.
calculate their cost by summing all the related items. I think this is the right way to go. I, I don't think we need much of what Wagtail page model does for us in this particular case. I just hope this works. Oh, I didn't need that actually. So in, that's, in that case, we are going to want to register this, so it'll display, uh, let's see, we're not running right now, but uh, in the uh, Wagtail admin area. So let me just double check, this model admin has been installed. Wagtail contrib model admin, there it is. So that's good. So you just import your model, and then you have this uh, model admin class. So this is pretty conventional. We've done this in other apps. Yeah, here's your let's display, and I think you can say sort. If you put a minus in front of that, it'll sort it reverse. So you will need the string representation. And the meta. And these are optional because this pluralizes with just an S. And this should be singular. To follow conventions, this re class represents an instance of that class represents a specific subscriber. All right. Uh, hello, Lustin Games. He says, uh, hello, my name is Kevin. I do a lot of Python software and web projects, and I wanted to get started with Django. But setting up is confusing, especially the virtual environment stuff. Can you help me? And also, I will send you some of my web projects so you can help me fix the bugs. Uh, Lustin, do you have any of your uh, code on GitHub? I can take a look at it. And yeah, admittedly, the, um, the virtual environment is uh, a difficult thing initially but it does get better pretty quickly that's you'll just get that as muscle memory uh, particularly if you're using an IDE um, for example Visual Studio Code uh, will detect that I have a virtual environment here in the project and as long as I have one Python file open. This is a little get gotcha. I think they'll fix later, but uh, when I open the console here, it automatically activates my virtual environment. So even that, there's it'll smooth over. I don't have a strong preference aside from the recommendation to stick closely with pip and Python package index. So to that extent, whoops. We're using this at my work, and it, it's not the authoritative way of doing things, but it does simplify um, virtual environment handling. I think there's a little bit of controversy around, you know, just generally Python package management, or at least disagreement. Uh, there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, there's trade-offs. 
but basically pip and does give you just a quick way of, of doing things. Um, you just type, you know, basically pip in. <laughs> we kind of read the docs. Yeah, uh, there's just a couple of commands, but you know, in this project, I'm not even use pip in. I'm just, uh, I'll show you my workflow real quick. So let's say, firstly, Let's use Python 3. So let's say we're in our, our project folder. All you need to do really is create a virtual environment. Let me double check which Python is my default here. So I'm using Python 3. Like, let's not even talk about Python 2. I think it's basically not recommended to use that anymore. So we're using Python 3. So you can run a, a Python command. I think it's running a module called vir virtual env. And then you just give the name of a folder. Sorry, the typos, but um, so this command says tells Python to invoke the module virtual env, vnv, and to create a empty virtual env in this folder here. So when I run this command and I list the files out, you'll see I have this environment folder now within my little working directory. So that's step one. one create virtual create a virtual environment check step two activate and this is just one command as well it's a little bit obscure but if you just uh, memorize this command it'll uh, be second nature so you from within your working directory There's our virtual environment folder. We just run this command called source. And we're gonna look for, we're gonna source a file within that folder. So source environment folder, there's a binary file called activate. This, inv this activate command A shell script. So we don't have to really read it, but it, it's, it, it does all this stuff for us of getting us into that. And from there, you just uh, you know install packages. So pip install Django, for example. And you can see that now I've got some packages installed there. Let me just double check. So I do have pip end installed here. Let's take a look at how pip end handles this. So by just typing the pip end command, it gives us some help. And I think all you gotta do here is run two commands. So pip env install. And it notices that this is an empty project. And then it creates two files in that project, a pip file and a pip file lock. The pip file has some metadata and lists the packages that are installed, Python version, um, that stuff. You don't really have to manage that. And then pip in shell. Uh, 
flying pandas says Barley any by any chance I was wondering if you have any time outside your web app development if you can help me debug some Python sorry to interrupt you yeah I do have the time to help uh, debug let's see do you have your code on github where's your code published flying pandas something oh it's already activated then I can just start using let's take a look at flying pandas code no uh, do you mind then it's a secret just I can't really uh, do you mind if I show it on our live stream or uh, well What's the, uh, okay, so this is a hangman problem. What's the context here? Are you doing like a book? White space, oh, okay. How are you editing your code? I'm, uh, Flying Panda says, I'm having some problems with white space. So that might just be something we could just, new file. Take a look at GitHub. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Firstly, your file is a tech is a .txt file, Flying Pandas. So then, any IDE you're using, and you're using idle, um, but it won't really know to that syntax is uh, semantic or meaningful. Uh, sorry, that white space is semantic syntactic. Good grief. So, idle is a good. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. How do you invoke idle? I can't even remember that. Okay, well, in any case, the file extension probably isn't the issue here. And if you're typing this text in idle, it should be just able to fix it for you. And on scanning, I don't see any issues. Let me save this. Oops, wrong button. I format the document. My formatter doesn't really complain about much. Uh, this is something else. All right. So, what kind of error are you getting? What kind of trace back are you getting? Looks like the code's working. I'm not sure what error. This is an issue when I'm trying to submit the code. Where are you submitting the code? Codathon. Uh, so I think it's something with the code on the website. This code is fine. Oops, that's not the code. This code is fine. All the white space is correct. Uh, it's working. You know, as you 
would expect like the game plays correctly in my console so flying pandas I don't think there's a problem that I can tell at least uh, can you show me the I don't see in your imager link, I don't see any mention of white space. Like, I don't see any error message about adding and deleting. Uh, the red and green symbols I don't know what those are in idle my guess is hmm. like if you look on my my terminal here the code just worked so see if I can find an online Python interpreter real quick yeah try this try repl it repl it Python 3 R E P L dot I at languages Python 3 let me post this in the chat actually I'll just show you over here so we're gonna go over here and we'll paste the code you sent I just deleted it so I need to and I closed the gist dang it So we'll just run this over here. And we'll do the if name. I don't know if I actually need this. Well. We'll run the game. Alright, how does this replit work? Let's see. We go to main pi. Share this. All right, check this out. I'm going to send this link back in the chat. Bleak, colorful BSD daemon. <laughs> nice. And we're just going to run. Try that. Did did you go to that link, um, Flying Pandas? Just go there and click the Run button, and you, you'll notice. Basically, I'm not sure if this picture is going to be drawn. I don't really want to debug that whole thing, but it looks like it's correct. Uh, yeah, your code's working, so I would just disacknowledge those characters you're seeing in idle. Uh, this is all looking good here. So, yep. Yeah. Yep, you're welcome. wondering if this uh, orders model hit so let me double check back here uh, less than games did that quick tour of the um, you know Python environment handling help uh, are you still around 
So I'm going to continue on to see if we hear back from Leston Games. So we're going to register this model with the admin in a minute. So we can manage orders. But first I'm wanting to see if this even works. Actually... I believe we want to be able to edit these through the admin as well. <laughs> Let's run the migration. Let's try it. Uh, we're going to get the order item in there, though. So here, this is pretty straightforward. Again, inheriting from models model. A standard Django model. Form Q2. Order. Have trouble with my shift key, I guess. And when we delete the models the order, we will delete the order items. The cascading delete. This is what I'm going to deviate. I don't want the foreign key. Just trying to think if that would be confusing or what the likelihood of this is, um, becoming an issue down the road. I guess there's as much, well, there's probably a higher likelihood of the price changing. I don't know. Does price change? I don't know why we need to stringify this.
All right, so we're gonna run it. No major errors. Oops. Run the migrations. Run the server. All right. So nothing really breaking. Now we've got the admin. <coughs> Did just come out yesterday, I think. Yeah, this is huge accessibility improvements. Nice. Tri double A level. No, all right, that's good. Tons of accessibility enhancements. Really good stuff. All these features, I just don't want to go through the change log, but yep. Yeah. Good to know. I should be upgrading to two six soon. Once I get this product, this feature landed. All right. So we don't have anything here. We have the store with a couple of products, books. I'll have to figure this out how we're going to organize this. But uh, let's go ahead and put orders. Um, you know, I forgot what's the meta. I think the idea is implicit as part of the model. Like, on knit. Shoot, I don't know where that comes from actually, but they're not defining it here. I believe Django does automatically handle the model, adding the ID field. Let's close this back up. You can, if you're still here in the room, uh, lesson games, you can see, you know, there's quite a lot that goes into the environment, <coughs> the virtual environment. So you don't, this is why it's really important to create one for every project, including all of your, um, you know, the packages you install and stuff like that. So we've got a couple of migrations. I think my IDE just doesn't realize that this will inherit the ID field. I should be complaining down here as well. So back over to learnwagtail.com. This is another thing I'll endorse. I, um, they have this free course on Wagtail basics. It used to be 30 bucks. It's worth 30 bucks to be honest. Uh, pretty comprehensive course. I was hoping I would see the list of, oh, all the video lessons I guess are down here. Tons and tons of these video lessons uh, and actually they have how to install Wagtail using Pipinv in less than six minutes less than games check this out this is a good introduction to both Wagtail and Pipinv for your virtual environment management but let's get back to what we're trying to do register the model here so we've got that registered uh, so this is a good convention I guess admin.py <clears throat> although in our project we've been registering model admins under wagtail hooks so if I go to like contact for example wagtail hooks, hooks model admin defined there you know this does actually seem like a better convention to, to put in admin.py 
I think I was just reading the wagtail docs and it said put in wagtail hooks. Hmm. Uh, for consistency in this project, I will stick with wagtail hooks. And really, this is the only hook in here. Man, I like that admin dot pi. that is an enhancement so we're in the orders let's go ahead and put wagtail hooks consistency is more important than at this point <clears throat> than uh, well broader convention of the admin up high so we're gonna copy and paste this stuff change the parts So we'll add this full name property so we can return the customer name. And it should be just accessible here. Now model and register. So essentially what we're doing here from I'm getting our imports correctly. Why is this complaining to me? Registering this as a wagtail model administration thing. <laughs> so it's going to basically appear over here. Although I think it should appear under store. Let's just see if this initial one works. When I refresh the page, there it is orders and it's got a placeholder icon. Good. Add order. And it knows to use the model and it's got the right field widgets. Great. Uh, except this, but well, it is a text area. It can be expanded. I should be able to resize this. Oh, left and right. So we can do like street address. That's something like that. All right. And whether or not it's paid. So great. Uh, all that comes for free um, just by using you know, wagtail conventions. I do think the order should be up here under the store. So if we come over here to the store, that's all to do. I have to think about this for a second, but basically I'm gonna move all this code and I'm gonna make a sort of a hard dependency between these two models. Let's go to store and check out the wagtail hooks. And we have this store group, which a group allows you to do this sub menu. 
So I think if I actually just do this. This should this is a typo. Should be book model admin. I had a more generic product class earlier. Imports. Typos. And now if we look at the store, we have orders. Let's add the paid status. And we'll add true and comma, just by convention, and filter fields. It's a tuple, so. So we can see whether or not it's paid. List filter, all right. So it's gonna use the right. Oh, I know what happens here. This is a really subtle thing. But if you look at a single item tuple, it treats it as a string. And it's you'll notice it's trying to map, it's trying to slice it. 
it's trying to iterate over the items in this tuple, but it's treating it as just a regular string. This is so opaque. If I add a comma, it's a single element tuple, so gotcha, then it works. Okay, cool. All right, so what are we at? Just a little bit over one hour. Uh, we've got the basic model in place uh, for the admin section, the order model. Let me delete this wag to hooks file. It's no longer in use. Things are looking pretty good. and we'll go ahead and call it a night. It's 5.30 in the morning here. My sleep schedule is a little bit messed up. But in any case, that's good progress. It's looking nice. The uh, Wagtail admin gives you all this functionality for free just by following conventions. Uh, again, um, I'm trying to stick closer with the way uh, other people and projects are, are doing things and naming things. So we're to a gander at uh, schema.org to see how they're Handling addresses, we decided on a simple solution of just having an ad a big text field, not the optimal solution, particularly if we want to do shipping. So I have to revisit that. When we looked at Learned Wagtail, how to register a model, a non Wagtail model with the Wagtail admin, that was pretty straightforward. And learned a little bit more about customizing the index view, which is essentially this page here, including the search bar, add button. Uh, it's got quite a, a lot of ways you can you can customize it, even adding extra JavaScript and CSS. Really handy. And very well, fairly well documented. Uh, again, um, using the Django 2 by example ebook from Pack Publishing. It's also open source on GitHub under the MIT license. Highly recommend uh, this book and you know just for the price of the book unpacked, um, let's just say 30 bucks or 40, uh, that's three or four months of the, the subscription service. So I, um, I think that's worth trying out for a month under the free trial. And if you don't like it, then that's uh, understandable too, but there is some really great content there. There's several books on Django, for example. What else have we been doing? So our code is open source on GitHub. You can check us out. Right now I'm in a, a particular branch, which I'll push. It's gonna ask me for my password in one moment. Okay, we got our changes pushed to GitHub. If I switch over to the initial store project, you can see I just, uh, we're at 33 commits. We've been working on this for a couple of weeks. Can't remember how, since June 27th actually. Uh, so a lot of stuff, reviewing my own code. Uh, if you'd like any other, um, if you'd like to get involved with this project or you'd like to collaborate in any way, you can feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is on GitHub. And I appreciate everybody who's joining the um, Twitch live streams. It's always nice to have people around in the chat, asking questions, getting off topic. It's perfectly welcome to sort of ask me anything style. I'm particularly interested in helping people uh, to develop their own open source projects or get uh, gain proficiency in Python, Django, Wagtail. Anyway, this has been another uh, sort of episode of the live coding series, creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS where we've focused on the e-commerce aspect of our website, westernfriend.org. Thanks again for watching. If you're on YouTube, uh, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll try to respond to those. Uh, any questions or comments promptly. All right, well, everybody have a good day.